Three, Three two, two, one. one. children of God from John chapter 1 verse 12. So let's open up with prayer. So wiggle your fingers, wiggle your body, clap your hands together and bow your heads. Dear God, thank you again that we get to join together, that we get to learn about you, Lord, for you're so glorious. Help us to know today, Lord, how you want to invite us to receive you and to know to know you better and to serve you better, Lord. Help us as we listen to the story. Help us as we celebrate. Help us as we sing songs of praise to you, Lord, because you're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm glad that you are here for our party, and I'm glad that Abby and Serena showed up. I want to show you a little skit that we filmed earlier where things didn't work out quite so well. Hi everybody, I'm so excited. It's party time. I'm going to get Abby and Serena and to get them ready to come because it's time for our party. Fine. Abby, it's time, it's time for the party. Yeah, but my book's so good, I, I just can't leave it. Your book, but, but we have balloons and noisemakers and, and a pinata. No, I, I'd rather sit here and read my book. Oh. Serena, it's time. It's time for the party. Oh, the party? Yes, the, it's the 40th lesson. It's time for our party. Uh, I have got to work on a puzzle. I'm, I'm getting progress done, you know? It's a nice, it's a nice puzzle, but we've got balloons and noisemakers and, and we've got a pinata. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to stick with the puzzles. Sorry about that. Well, I'm so glad that they decided to come to the party. So you might be looking at this thinking, oh, well, that was an interesting skit. But, uh, but we're going to talk more about that later. And you're going to hear more about how that relates to a lesson that Jesus wants to teach us from the Bible. Now, before we have that lesson, I'm thinking that you might be so excited about that pinata. And so I think maybe we should get the pinatas out. And if it's okay with your mom and dad, Maybe you could eat a little bit of candy while we do the lesson. All right, so this one's Mr. Mark's, and Serena's, Miss Serena's got mine. All right, Mr. Mark, are you going to open yours? Uh, You're I'm going to pull... pull the bottom, and hopefully the candy will come. All right. Should I do it now? Yeah, I'm going to blow my horn because this is exciting. Okay. Ready? Take a different approach. I've got my best mixing spoon, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna swack it. All right, how many hits do you think it's gonna take? I'm hoping more than one, but less than four. All right, are you ready, Serena? You got it. I'm, yes. gonna, I'm not gonna hit Serena. Okay. Hit. Oh, one hit. One hit. Is one hit. That's all. It took one, you are hit. The one hit. One oh, hit. One hit. Well. I'm not going to eat any candy because I won't be able to talk while I'm doing the lesson if I have candy in my mouth. But you can feel free to have some candy. Oh, so if you didn't get a chance to make yourself a pinata, then you can watch Andrew's video and make yourself a pinata for later because Andrew did a great video for us about making the pinata. Now you might think, gee, all of this partying for lesson 40, that's all great. But what's this have to do with the Bible? Well, you know, God actually, he really likes to have parties. God really likes when people all gather together. And Jesus knew about this. In the culture that Jesus lived in in his time, people threw great lavish parties and they would have lots of people come out. Oh, that's a great picture of me. Yeah, so this time Jesus tells us this. Uh, so they would all come together. There would be friends and family. There would be all kinds of music and laughter and lots and lots of food and they would have a great party. So Jesus tells us this story. He says, uh, a man once gave a great banquet, and he invited many people. But at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, come, everything is ready, the table is set. 
But they alike began to make excuses, and the first one said, I've bought a field. I must go out and see to it. Please have me excused. Another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I've married a wife, and, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. The master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go out to the streets and the lanes of the city, bring in the poor and the cripple, crippled and the blind and the lame. And, and the servant said, sir, what you have commanded has been done and still there's room. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. So Jesus was telling us that, that uh, in this story, Jesus wants us to know that God is inviting us. He's inviting us to have him as part of our lives, to, uh, to join our life with his and to use him as the pattern that we follow. And he wants us to accept that invitation. But we're like these people, at the, the people who didn't come to the banquet. We, we sometimes have all sorts of excuses and reasons why we can't come. Now, you might think, oh, I don't remember Jesus inviting me to a banquet. I must have missed my invitation in the mail. Well, the Bible also tells us a little bit about how God, how God invites us. In the book of Revelation, it says in uh, chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Now, you're thinking, Jesus is going to come and knock on my door? Oh, now, now wouldn't it, that be great? Like, I would be so excited if Jesus came right now and knocked on my door. Because you know what? Jesus is so perfect. He can't get COVID. And he doesn't have to follow social distancing. So I could give him the biggest hug and not even worry about it at all. It would be so awesome. But do you think Jesus means he's really going to come and knock on your door? I think what he's saying in this verse is that Jesus is calling to your heart. And Jesus wants you to answer him. And you might think, oh, you know, it, it, if an adult was thinking, they might think, oh, it's just so, it's so busy because of COVID. I don't have time for Jesus. And maybe you, you're thinking, oh, I'm just a kindergartner. I, I, I can't really serve Jesus. And I really don't know if I can get to know Jesus and if I can have a life with Jesus. Well, I want to tell you, I, I want to tell you a little bit about how God can use you. And you know, Sometimes when I get emotional, I start to cry in my voice. That's kind of funny. But I'm going to do the best I can because I, I really want you to know how God has used you in my family in this time. Now, some of you know a little bit about my work, that I go to see people who are really vulnerable and they're at risk. If they caught this virus, then it could kill them. And I go to see them and I try to help them to be stronger so they don't fall and break their hip. And I try to help them to move better so that they can uh, keep their heart strong and that they cannot have pain in their back and those kinds of things. And when the virus came, oh, my work, it got really hard. And I thought, God, I, I don't know if I could do this. I was so afraid that I was going to give someone the virus and that they could die from that. I thought, I can't go to work, I'm too afraid. But do you know, by preparing the lessons for Sunday school, do you remember the lesson where we had, where Jesus calmed the storm? And we learned that Jesus is power over nature and that he can comfort us when we're afraid. Well, I remember that lesson and it helped me to feel courage. It helped me to be brave. Well, work got really complicated and every time I would go to see someone, I would have to put on some special protective gear. Maybe you've seen pictures of people in these things. So I would have to wear this and I would have to tie that on. And then, and then I would have to put on a special mask and I would have to tighten that up around my nose. And just when you think I couldn't get more covered, well, I'd have to put on the face shield and then the gloves. Now, doesn't this look like you would love to have me come and visit you? I can tell you. Yeah, it's very hard to have some fun times with my patients like this. And you know what? I didn't like it one bit. I didn't want to do it. I thought, God, I don't know if I can do this. I, I'm really tired and, and this is hot and tiring and I, I don't think I can do it. And do you know, I had you guys working on your memory verses and God was really pressing on me. Maybe I needed a memory verse to help me out. And in reading the Bible, I found this verse. In Psalm 51, it says, give me a willing spirit, O God, to sustain me. 
And every time I would go to someone's house or go to their apartment to see them for physiotherapy, I would put on my gear and I would think, give me a willing spirit, oh God, to sustain me. And working on that memory verse, that helped to give me strength. And sometimes by Friday, oh, I was, I was so discouraged and tired. But my family would come together and we would record a lesson for you. And you know, I think you've seen my family, they, they can be silly. And we would have so much fun laughing and joking around while putting the lesson together. And, and after that, I would feel ready for the weekend and I would feel all energetic. Sunday morning sometimes, I would think, boy, I really miss church and I miss going to Sunday school. But then we'd get on a Zoom call. And we would be on the Zoom call and you would show me all of your wonderful princess dresses and your favorite bicycle helmet. You would show me the stuffed animals that you loved and the real animals, the puppies and the rabbits and the plants that you were growing. And I would get to see your siblings and you would tell me about what you like to do outside and whether you'd like to be in a spaceship or whether you'd like to live under the ocean. And that would really cheer me up and I would have so much fun. And still sometimes on Monday mornings, I would get up and I would not want to go to work. And I know that God gives me every day work for him to do, that he gives me everything I need. But some days I just feel like I couldn't do it. But sometimes Monday mornings, I would look and in my email or on my Facebook, there would be a message with a memory verse from one of you. And God used that to encourage me and to give me endurance so that I could go to work and I could do my job and I could serve God through my job. So if you're thinking, I'm too young to serve God, I'm too young to do anything for God, I'm just an SK, I want you to know how much God used you in my life and with my family in this time. And I want to thank you and your families for being part of this time with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I want to thank you for doing your memory verses and for being part of the Zoom call and for helping to strengthen me. I want you to know that God can use you. So when we look at this picture of Jesus and he's standing at the door and he's knocking and he's wanting you to join with him, I want you to know that you can. And I think you'll remember that we've talked about these three hearts and we can use this pattern to say a prayer together a prayer to receive God into your life and a prayer to ask Jesus to help you to serve him in this way. So if you'd like to say this prayer with me, you're welcome to join. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow my head in prayer and I'm going to say some things and, I, and I'm going to be some time. And if you'd like, you can say them after me. Or if you'd like, you can say them in your heart. If you don't feel like you're ready to do that, maybe you can talk about it with your mom and dad. And maybe in the coming days or weeks or even months, God will remind you of this. And I'm going to pray that he does. And he'll let you know when you're ready in your heart to say this prayer for him. All right, so let's pray together this prayer. We might as well wiggle because we've been sitting still and eating candy. Mm -hmm. So clap your hands together and bow your head. Dear Jesus, I know that you gave me a dark, I know that I have a dark heart. I know that I sin. I know that I don't do what you want me to do. I know you sent Jesus and Jesus has a perfect heart. Jesus never sinned. I thank you that Jesus chose to die for me. I thank you that you paid the price for my sins and gave me a clean heart. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us, I'd love to hear from you. You could email and let me know, and I'd be so excited. But I'm going to keep praying for you, and I hope that you'll keep praying for me and for my family. But let's get to our, our last memory verse. So don't hesitate to send me if you've done this one, too. All right, our memory verse. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. From John chapter 1, verse 12. All right, so we're going to pause and Mr. Mark and the girls are gonna come and do some songs with you and hopefully we'll have a fitness video with Mr. Ben to, to work off some of that candy that you've been mm -hmm. eating. All right. Hi, Hi kids. kids. Welcome to SK Songs this week. We're gonna start off with Jesus Loves Me. Hopefully you remember it. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. 
Little ones to him we run. They are weak, but he is constant. All right. So the next one's going to be the fruit of the spirit, and we always start with the lemon. The fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, then you might as well hear it. It can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job. Now we need another fruit. Who shall we choose for our second fruit? Uh, um, how about Miss Michelle? <laughs> Big, tough choice. How about a pomelo? A pomelo. That's, That's a great good. fruit. The fruit of the spirit's not a pomelo. The fruit of the spirit's not a pomelo. If you want to be a pomelo, then you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, should we do one more fruit? Yeah. One more? This time, let's ask Abby. Let's do a grapefruit. 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 I love grapefruit. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grapefruit. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grapefruit. If you want to be a grapefruit, well, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Great singing. One more song, though. We have one more song. You have another song? Our last song. What a party. Our last song. It's the gospel medley. This is a party song. All right. Let's we'll start off with some marching. Mm -hmm. oh, when the, the saints, saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number, in that number. When the saints go marching in. Swing low, sweet chariot. Yeah. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, yeah, coming for to carry me home. I'm going to sing, sing, sing. I'm going to shout, shout, shout. I'm going to sing. I'm going to shout. Praise the Lord. When those gates are open wide, I'll be singing that Jesus had a mess. Sing and rest, shout. Praise the Lord. This train is bound for glory. This train, woo, woo. This train is bound for glory. This train, woo, woo. This train is bound for glory. I'm going to sing salvation story. This train is bound for glory. This train. Woo, woo. Great singing, kids. Woo! Now you get to sing the All right, well, hold on for Mr. Ben's fitness video, and we'll all dance and party together. Woo! <laughs> We're going to try and do some exercises to the beat of the music you can hopefully hear. Ready? Let's start with some jumping jacks. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put your hands behind your ears. One, two, three, four, Good job. Good job. Well, excellent. I 
say see you on the Zoom call, or maybe I already have. Bye. Bye. Oh, 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 that was excellent. All right, well, I hope you had fun. Oh, well, now, Cody. Yay! And then you can enjoy the caddy and the piñata and fun times with your family. We had a great time doing lessons with you, and I wish you all a great summer. Thanks to Miss Nine, Miss Evelyn, Miss Ainsley, Miss Hadley, Mr. Hamlin, Mr. Ben, and of course, Abby and Serena, and Mr. Mark, and Cameron, who all